In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to prepare a mug for texturing within Cineware for Illustrator. Now, of course, we could do all of the texturing within Cinema 4D, but we're going to go the extra step of preparing this mug so it can be used as a template that 2D artists can apply different artwork to it within Illustrator. Now, the first thing that we need to do is apply a base color to this mug. And for that, we're going to need to create a new material. This box down here on the lower left of the standard layout is the material manager. And you can create a new material by choosing create new material or by simply double clicking within the box. You're gonna get a new material swatch and you can double click that swatch in order to open it in the material editor. We'll go ahead and rename this material mug base color. And we wanna make sure that the color channel is selected. Here we can set the base color for the mug, and this is something that users will be able to adjust within Illustrator. For now, let's just go ahead and set it to a black color. Next, what we want to do is actually modify the reflectance of this material. We want to choose how reflective the material is going to be, and we do that here in the reflectance channel. By default, the material just has a specular reflection which is a fake reflection based on the lights in the scene. We want to use a real life reflection. So we're going to remove this default specular layer by hitting the remove button. And instead we're going to hit the add button and add a different type of reflection layer. Any of these first four will generally work, but we're going to choose Beckman. This works really well for plastics and whatnot. Now you'll see that we've made our material completely reflective. So we need to tone that down somehow. Well, of course we can adjust the reflection strength, but that's not actually what we're looking to do here. We want to adjust the reflectivity based on the angle of the object. You might've noticed that most objects are more reflective when you look obliquely at them than when you're looking straight at their surface. And the way we define that in 3D is using the Fresnel property. So down here in the layer Fresnel box, you can set a Fresnel. We're going to choose a dielectric Fresnel because conductor Fresnels are basically for metallic surfaces. And we've got a ceramic or glaze type surface here. Now we can choose a preset Fresnel. And there's no ceramic or glaze option here but there is pearl, and I think that's a pretty good match for what a ceramic glaze might look like. So we'll choose that. And basically all this preset does is sets the index of refraction here to 1.69. The higher the index of refraction, the more reflection you're going to get. The lower the index of refraction, the less reflective it's going to be at the angles. So we'll go back here again to the Perl preset. And now what we want to do is apply this material to our object. So we'll close the material editor and drag the material right onto the mug here in the viewport or onto the mug within the object manager. And now you can see that we have a black mug. Let's go ahead and get rid of those wires or lines by switching the display back to Garot shading. So here we have a pretty good start for our mug, and now we just need to set up the label for the mug. Now, normally if you needed to texture all the aspects of this mug, every surface of this mug, you would need to use a process called UV mapping. And that's where we map every single polygon, rectangle or triangle that makes up this object into a flat 2D image. In many cases, when we're working on product packaging, we can avoid going through the full process of UV mapping and simply use cylindrical or flat decal maps in order to apply our textures. And that's what we're going to do here. But first, we need to create a selection set in order to restrict our decal just to the outside surface of the mug. So select the mug template polygon object here and go into the polygon mode. What we want to do here is select all of the polygons that make up the cylindrical outside of the mug. The easiest way to do this is to go into the loop selection mode. And you can get there either by choosing select, loop selection, or by hitting UL. 
what we want to do is select the loop that makes up the rim of this mug. And it may take a little bit of hunt and peck to get the highlight in the right spot. You can zoom in with your camera until you're able to select this loop that just makes up the rim of the mug. Now we need to rotate to the bottom of the mug, which you can do using this rotate icon here or by alt left dragging and then alt middle dragging to pan. And we want to shift select this loop that defines the bottom of the mug. Next, we need to isolate the handle. So we're going to select the loops that define the start and end of the handle. So we'll do that again by holding down shift and selecting this loop and this loop. So now we've basically bordered the area that we actually want to select. So now what we can do is use the Fill Select tool in order to select the desired area. So go to the Select menu and choose Fill Selection, or hit UF. And now you can see that we're able to select either the handle here or the cylindrical outside of the mug. Basically any area that's bordered by the selected polygons. So just click to select the cylindrical outside of the mug. Now we need to apply a texture just to that area of the mug. And to do that, we're going to create another new material. Again, you can use Create New Material or simply double click in the Material Editor. Now we can apply this by simply dragging it onto the mug within the viewport. Because there's polygon selected, Cinema 4D is automatically going to create a polygon selection to go with this new material. The polygon selection is represented here in the object manager by this tag with a triangle icon. And this tag stores all of the polygons that you had selected when you created the tag. We're going to go ahead and change the name of this tag here to mug outside. Now you'll see that the texture disappeared, and that's because when we go to the texture tag here, it's still referring to the polygon selection.1, which was the original name of the tag. We'll change this here to mug outside in order to match the name that we just set up in the polygon selection tag. Now, by default, again, this used UVW mapping for the texture. In this case, we don't want to use UVW mapping, but instead we're going to just use cylindrical mapping. This is going to make it really easy to map our cylindrical surface without any distortions, and we're not going to have to worry about UV mapping. With the cylindrical mapping projection chosen, we need to adjust the projection itself. So select the mug object and the texture mode, and you can see this cylinder represented here in the view. This is basically the cylindrical projection. So you can see that it's much, much too large. An easy way to get it close to the correct size is to right click on the texture tag and choose fit to object. Now you'll see that that much more closely matches the size of the mug, but it's actually including the handle as well. So next we'll go into the texture tag and look at the coordinates within the Attribute Manager. So what we need to do is set this Z value to match the X value, because here we have our X and our Z, those should be the same for this cylinder. So we'll set the size Z here to four centimeters. And now we just need to move it over to line it up. And for that, we can just set the position Z to zero. Now you can see that we have a cylinder that's perfectly matched to the outside of the mug. Let's go and apply a texture to this mug in order to see how things are going to line up. So we'll double click on this material and go to the color channel. And in the texture here, we'll click on the three dots and go into the text folder and load the fishy mug PNG that came with your project assets. Whenever this dialog shows up asking if you want to copy the image to the project path, just say no. Now let's close the material editor and look to see how the material is applied. And you can see that things are working pretty well. 
we might want to adjust the angle of this material. If we look here at the image, you can see that the purple fish is towards the far left and the red fish is towards the right. So let's adjust this so that the purple fish comes here on the left side of the handle. So for that, we keep the texture tool and the texture axis enabled and we're going to switch to the rotation mode and simply rotate this around. I think that looks pretty good, but if we want to make sure that the texture is centered right on this handle, what we can do is go back and instead of using a texture, we'll use a gradient. So click this button here and choose a gradient. And now you can see a line exactly where the texture is wrapping. So we'll go ahead and rotate around and put that directly centered on the handle. Now before we export this for Illustrator, we want to rename this material. So we'll double click on the name here and rename this Mug Label. And we also want to go ahead and remove that gradient so that when people open it up in Illustrator, they're not going to see it. Finally, we want to go into the material and copy the reflectance settings here and paste them into this material so that both the label and the face have the same gloss appearance. And here we do need to remove the default specular. Now we have our mug basically ready to texture within Cineware for Illustrator. In the next tutorial, we're going to finish out some aspects of the Illustrator template, including adding an environment and a floor for this mug.